Want tarnation? Howdy folks, this is Apple Geek, and welcome back for another blind reaction. Uh, just a couple announcement things here real quick. Um, as you can see, I'm back in my home safe and sound. Uh, Midwest Brony Fest was last weekend. It was a blast. Um, it, I would love to spend time here talking about it, but this video is about something else. So I am going to just leave that for a separate video altogether, which I hopefully can get done this weekend here. Uh, just a little video thing regarding all the stuff that happened on that trip. But um, anyway, I'll be looking for that soon-ish, just whenever I can find time to, within the next week for sure, but hopefully this weekend. Um, on a related note, next weekend I've got another convention coming up, MLP MSP in Minneapolis. So that, that one's a little closer for me, it's a little over an hour away. Um, but that one I'm going to be having uh, some roommates in the hotel, so I am probably not going to be trying to do a reaction during the convention. So I'll probably just head home Sunday night and do it then. So just be aware, next week's will be delayed again. Um, just it's just the way things work out, it's, it, it's a lot easier for me to just do it here than rather than try and drag a bunch of equipment somewhere else and, and whatnot. So, Anyway, uh, I do apologize for that, but I will get it done as soon as I can. Um, also, regarding reactions in general, I have been getting a lot of requests again as of late on you know, via comments on my videos and channel and whatnot, saying, you know, hey, react to this, react to that, etc. Um, I've been largely ignoring those, uh, and please, if, if I have ignored you on those, please don't feel singled out or take it personally or whatever. Um, the problem is I have got such a ridiculously long list of reaction requests that's been piling up over the last several months that I've not been able to get to. It just, it, it's hard for me to keep responding and say, yeah, that might be cool, but sorry, I won't get to it for a long time, whatever. It's just, I hate constantly apologizing for that, so I've just started ignoring those. Um, so I just wanted to talk about it here so everybody watching will know I, you know, I will do my best to get back to fan content soon, but with the conventions and everything and the, the, all the comments and everything that go along with the uh, the canon episodes, it's just hard to find time to focus on that stuff. So um, once we hit the mid-season hiatus here, for sure, uh, and get past these conventions, I should be having time to get back to fan content finally. So um, just know I, I am still working towards that stuff, and I am still adding some things to my list, but just the list is getting long, and it's just mentally stressing me a little bit. So... Um, that's why I've just started kind of ig ignoring some of those. So again, I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully I can start getting caught up on some of that stuff soon. So um, yeah, just like over the summer or something. So anyway, enough about that. This week's episode, Flutter Brudder. I have been waiting for this one for a long time because apparently we were supposed to meet Fluttershy's brother. We have not met Fluttershy's family before, had any mention of them in any way, shape or form. So, well, for that matter, we haven't really seen any significant family of a Pegasi or Pegasus pony at all in the, in the show as of yet. Scootaloo doesn't appear to have any parents. I know that's a hotly debated topic, but we haven't seen any family. And even Rainbow Dash's parents aren't truly confirmed in canon to be her parents, and we haven't seen any dialogue or personality out of them. So, um, yeah, this should be interesting. I wonder if we'll see her parents, too, or not. So, just have to find out. And I'm very curious to see where things are going in terms of Fluttershy's character growth because this season we've been seeing a lot of, you know, past lessons kind of like, you know, we've been seeing the characters like live out the results of having learned these past lessons. You know, I saw that a lot of Newbie Dash where, you know, Rainbow Dash has clearly grown from where, you know, how she'd handled herself versus the way she would have handled herself, you know, back in earlier seasons. So I'm very curious to see with all the lessons regarding being firm and assertive and whatever with Fluttershy. How is she going to handle whatever situation she's thrown into? So, are they going to go off on another tangent altogether? I really don't know. We'll just have to watch and see. So, without further ado, Flutter Brother starting now. We're so happy you could Interesting come have lunch house. with your father and me, Fluttershy. Right I away? You asked. Uh, oh, Dash awesome is there. You to invite me too. Things have been well, this so is fast. busy with the Wonderbolts lately. It's great to get a chance to relax someplace quiet. Wonderbolts, That's okay. That's exactly what I intend Continuity. to do now that I've retired. In fact, I converted the back house to showcase my cloud collection. <laughs> I have nice. my clouds, your mom has her flowers, you've got your animals, and your brother? Zephyr Breeze has his... Zephyr Breeze? <laughs> I'll say, we're 
Okay. Was convinced square clouds were gonna be the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's mature. Okay, so so she's fan. met him before. Actually, it's funny you bring Zephyr up. Uh oh. Oh no! Not again! <laughs> it's just not again. A while, dear, till he gets back on his horse. Is he gonna move back in? Wait, you don't mean. Guess who's home? <laughs> That's right, big <laughs> sis. It's your one and only favorite little brother, Amoa. Oh boy. <laughs> Those faces. <laughs> okay, I, I'm just not even sure how to process this right now. Um, instantly meeting all the family. That that was unexpected. Uh, this brother is it. Zephyr Breeze, I think it was. I'm already thinking it. Zephyr Breeze. Um, yeah, he looks to be quite the character. And apparently there's a long history with him. And uh, Rainbow Dash seems to know him too. So I, this ought to be good. I, I don't know where this is going. Hi, Ew. How's the <laughs> best ever? Hey, where's the love? How about a little excitement to see your baby brother? <laughs> I'm just surprised. When you left, you said main therapy was your calling. Main oh, it therapy? Is, sis, it is. You would not believe how much stress ponies Dave hold Rapp. in their veins. Everything gets limp, unmanageable. No offense, but brushing alone won't solve the problem. <laughs> what went wrong? Nothing went wrong per se. Wow. It's just the powers that be were so locked into their required styles, and you know me. I've got my own style, and I think they were a little threatened. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is. Well, that's a style. <laughs> well, if it isn't Rainbow's the best flyer that ever was, Dash. Oh, this ought to be good. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't tease you. I know the whole super awesome flyer bits just to impress me. Still, thanks for showing up what? my home. Oh, it's, no, it's... no, no. I kind of thought there'd be more ponies here. <laughs> no, I mean, no. I party planner friend, um, <laughs> Sprinkle Pie. She could turn this into a real house party. Am I right? I mean, this place could use it. Drab. Hey. <laughs> That's kind of mean. To redecorate. Dad, please. When I get all my stuff back in here, you won't even remember what this boring old place looked like. Um, Mom, Dad, can I talk to you for a second? Whoa. What is it, honey? This is a new side of Fluttershy. Zephyr moved back home is a good idea. I know you both want to help, but don't you remember last time? Zephyr's just trying to find his place, dear. Uh, interesting family portraits just in the background. Like his place always ends up being your place. And then he sort of makes you do everything for him. Well, we may not be as bold as you, Fluttershy. Yeah, one of these guys. Don't you worry. We know how to stand up for ourselves. <laughs> and they <laughs> we love your free spirit, Zephyr. It's the irony. And it would be wrong to cage that. Oh, Go daring you book. follow your dreams. <laughs> Zeph was just telling me all about the ins and outs of main therapy school. It's all so political. I just could not take it. Well, maybe if you stuck with it for more than a few weeks. Sorry, sis. But when something's not the right fit, this pony's gotta fly. Anyway, this guy is a complete and total narcissist. <laughs> Really, I hate to deprive you of my presence, but this breeze needs his Z's. Yeah, oh, that was the middle of the day, right? I know. Siesta. I'm just gonna assume you made up my room the way I like it, right, Mom? Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, All my stuff is out front. Wanna grab that for me, Pops? <laughs> <sighs> I guess I'm not in the luggage. <laughs> well, clearly, there's been some history there. I know you there. weren't expecting to see your brother, but you've been kind of nice right. animation. I'm the sorry. flowing manes. That's I'm I think that's new. So, so peeved right now. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> yes, cover Dinky's ears. Who's that with Dinky though? 
Aww. <laughs> there we go. Oh, um, sorry about that. We just had lunch with Fluttershy's parents, and you'll never guess who showed up. Woo! Mare Mare, Crazy Doodle Donkey, <laughs> uh, Cheese Sandwich, Miss Horsemeat! <laughs> Zephyr Breeze. Oh, that makes more sense. And from Pinky has, it's, is that her Pinky's friends list? Another one of his extended stays. She's a bit peeved. never learned to do anything for him. That's a terrible word. I don't know why my parents keep letting him trot all over them. <laughs> well, if your parents won't stand up for themselves, maybe you need to stand up for them. You know, hmm. you're right. Hmm. Time to put her lessons to use? Eh? The, oh, come on. Really? Really? Oh, hey, sis. Come to see me work my wow. magic and turn this place from drab to fab, huh? Well, watch and learn. Can't you see what you're doing? Yeah, Aww. I'm getting rid of this old stuff so I can turn the back house into my art studio. I decided I'm gonna be a sculptor. I'm talking about mom. Complete and utter disrespect. She's gonna move them so I can have my meditation patio here. She <laughs> loves replanting stuff, don't really? you, mom? Oh, come on. And dad's been collecting his favorite bits of cloud from the factory since before you were born. The very best from every production run since my first day on the job. <sighs> but why hold on to the past, really? You can't just grow Come on. and change everything mom and dad have Some serious you. sentimental value but there. This is the only place big enough for my studio slash meditation garden. Oh, unless Yeah, because it's, it's all about you. I you know speaking up for yourself can be hard. Believe me. But Zephyr will never stand on his own if he can lean on you. Don't be so dramatic, sis. Mom and Dad just want to let me be me, right? I can do plenty on my own. I agree. Good. Which is why yeah, so do it on your own. Out. Ooh. Oh, well, I mean, uh, I totally would. But I don't think that's what Mom and Dad want. It's not, right. is it? Uh, you know we right. love you, son. But They're actually admitting it. Okay. Sure. Oh, here come the waterworks. I, mean, I really just came back here to keep you guys company, but you didn't for the family. I just, I just gotta grab a few essentials. And you definitely have sure. somewhere else to go. Cloud gnome. Of course. There's plenty of ponies who'd love for a little breeze to blow their way. <laughs> Okay, where is he? I'm scared now. Where is he gonna end up? So, where's Zep gonna go now? Mm. I hope I did the right thing. Are you kidding? 100%! Hey, sis! Yeah, oh, I knew it. it. I knew it. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe like 70%. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zephyr. When mom and dad was going to quick. find someplace else to live, I don't think they meant here. With, with Fluttershy's well, parents, now we know where Fluttershy there. got her oh, timidness so from. by definition, it's someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> Stop googling me and help settle this. Come, you know, come on! I totally forgot that I promised to help Pinkie Pie sprinkle something. <laughs> yeah, dude, You're nice exit. plenty of places to go. Oh, fine. You can stay here. You're the best. We're gonna have so much fun. But one condition. Totally. Anything. You have to get a job. Ooh. <laughs> you always were kind of bossy. Zephyr Breeze. Kidding. Get a job. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Shy's face is a pr uh, priceless. Where have we gone so early. You have no idea how bad morning sun is for your mane. Remember how we talked about you getting a job? It was just yesterday. And but where are we go? We go to the farm. You can't expect me to find some sugar cube corner. Uh, no, uh, Rarity's boutique. I, I bet. Might say that. Yep, yep. So I did it for you. What? 
These fabrics all need to be dyed those colors. Do you think you can handle that? Um, I don't know. Mm. You get started while nah. Fluttershy and I head to the store for more supplies. Ta-da! Good luck. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna go well. Oh, uh, hi, Opal. Thanks for giving my brother a job. I just hope he's up to the Yeah, the, this is gonna be a disaster. Oh, darling, dyeing fabric is the simplest thing. You just dip cloth in a box. The face is painted on the, the mannequin suit. <laughs> what did you do? Since you he didn't do a darn thing. The time, I just figured it runs in the family, so why not outsource this stuff, you know? <laughs> Turns out the animal communication <laughs> not just Opal, is Opal. genetic. Just Opal, squirrels and everything. I asked you to do this job, not to pawn it off on innocent woodland creatures. <laughs> okay, I guess you have some feelings about this, <laughs> but you should know it's basically your cat's fault for walking by and giving me the idea. <laughs> but I'm actually kind of into um, this look. Okay, Opal so has Rainbow Dash is, tail. You're welcome. <laughs> this is just unacceptable. Wow. I guess I know when my efforts aren't appreciated. What efforts? <gasps> Wow. Oh. Those are tall. I'm glad you Was noticed. Was it? Oh, Twilight's Castle. New job. What? You me? said you were taking me to tea with the princess. Actually, I said I was going to tea with the princess. You're going to work. Ooh. Sis, come on. Don't worry, Zephyr. It'll be easy. I just need a Pegasus pony to fly up and wipe each window down from top to bottom. Washing I'm windows. What could sure be simpler? Right. Uh, mm, he's gonna find some way to con Spike. I it's wow, guarantee Zephyr, it. This looks amazing. Well, you know, Ukulele? Okay, sure. Where's Spike? Up here! He's at. Uh, yeah, he's You're up. Please. To supervise, not do all the work. I was supervising, and then Zephyr asked me about different cleaning techniques and which one was best. And if I could. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Spike fire. got Only Tom Sawyered. <laughs> That's straight out of Tom Sawyer. <laughs> oh come on, sis! I had to ask Spike to make sure I was doing it right. You didn't do it at all. Whoa. Well, I guarantee there won't be any fooling around on the next job. Next job? Okay, now now we're probably going for or not. You're coming with Clearing me. clouds. You don't have to come up with some excuse to hang out with me, Rainbows. Let's just go for a fly and see where the day takes us. Uh, no. We are going just to no. Wonderbolt's headquarters. And I am going to give you a oh, job wow. so simple and straightforward, not even you can weasel your way out of it. And the second you try, I'm going to zap you with a storm cloud. Got it? <laughs> oh, I got it. I can already feel the electricity between us. Oh boy. Okay, so what? What's he gonna do? Again? Escape is more like it. The threat was real. Keep trying. Finish something for once. Maybe that way you'd actually find something you like to do. That all sounds fine for your friends, but it's just not me. Then I'm sorry, Zephyr. No, th this would almost be like a CMC episode. They'd get him to try everything. <laughs> Fine. I'll just go live in the woods like my four ponies before me. <laughs> Guess the only breeze this Come on. can count on is his own. Oh, now where's he gonna go? the right thing. You couldn't let Zephyr pull the same stuff on you that he's always pulled on yeah, your folks. I guess so. So you don't want to seem just kicked out in the oh, cold, but at the same time, he's got a... Oh, oh dear. Is port... See, so he's, he's got to learn how to needs no pony. do We've something. Food, shelter. Just need to put the old kettle on. <laughs> okay. That 
sticky sticky make with the sparks Th that's not how that works Th uh, what's a pony got to do to find a decent stick around here <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some, like, Emperor's New Groove vibes out of this scene. Can't live like this. <laughs> Actually, I don't think he'd make it through the night. He reminds me of Kuzco as a llama right now, I don't know why. <laughs> Fluttershy! Hey! How's Hi! You? Cozying up in my sleeping bag. Ready to call it an early night. Such yeah, sure. Day, you know? It's noon. <laughs> You know me, Fiesta. Yeah. Uh, that, I can't do that. That's gonna be a thing now I in the venom, isn't it? Thing. Siesta. Zephyr, you're smart and talented. You could do anything if you just tried. And what if I give everything I have and still fail? Honestly, I think it's better not to try at all. But then you won't ever do anything. I don't expect you to yeah. understand. I mean, when have you ever failed? You've literally helped oh, save yeah, like right. a dozen but... times. <laughs> I was worried that I'd fail every time. Sometimes you have to do things even Newbie if Dash, you need I say more? <laughs> but failing is the worst. And quitting doesn't feel much better, does it? No. So here's the deal. You can come back with me, but you have to do exactly what I say. No exceptions. I will literally do anything you ask me if it means I don't have to stay here. Wow, well, that's progress. So, well, he's admitted he has a problem, so that's the first step, you know. Beg for help, then quit when I get frustrated. <laughs> no, no. Just kidding. Total opposite of that. Got it. You so... think he can do it? Every pony has time to live their lives when the hearts are filled with doubt. Frustration builds up inside, and it makes you wanna shout. But if you just take that first step, the next one will appear. And you find you can walk, then run, then fly. Wow. Into the stratosphere. Okay, this is a good song already. Come on, man. You gotta try. times in their lives when their hearts are filled with doubt. But if you just give it your all, you'll start to work it out. And I know I can't give up too soon. Get myself in the zone. And I find I can walk, then run, then fly. Is there gonna be anything left on that little head thing? In statue? How did he get that from what he started with? <laughs> sure, why not? I did it. I actually finished something by myself. And it looks exactly like it's supposed to. I knew you could do it, Zephyr. I didn't. <laughs> Thanks for believing in me, sis. Aww. What big sisters are for. So, Zeph, now that you've accomplished this, what's next? Anything I want. I mean, the sky. Right? Baby steps. Called it. Dinner, Mr. and Mrs. Shy. <laughs> it was great as usual. Thank you, dear, for not giving up on Zephyr. After all these years of pining for him, it must be so satisfying to see him on the right track. What? <laughs> Have you heard from Zephyr? Is he doing well? 
I tell you, what it's a is brand with new this? Party, so full of drive and determination. <laughs> That's great. Guess who graduated from main therapy training? Wow, that was quick. <laughs> awesome! Congratulations, son. You look so He does look good in that. I'm so proud of you, Zephyr. It was only a matter of time before they recognized my true genius. But actually doing the work probably <laughs> look and I wouldn't have if it weren't for you. Oh, I just give you some encouragement. You did this on your own. And honestly, right now I feel like I can do anything. Except find a place. I can still crash here for a few days. Really? But... Really? I we're just gonna leave it there? <laughs> well, like I said, baby steps. It, it just, yeah. Oh man, this was a fantastic episode. <laughs> Way better than last week's. Way better. Um, the. This is more or less exactly where I wanted to see Fluttershy be right now as a character. I I, I gotta say it, th this was just absolutely perfect to, to show our character growth. We've we've been seeing a lot of that this this season. Um, yeah, I I really should go back and talk about this before I start rambling on stuff here. But um, good character growth, a fantastic song. Um, yeah, very interesting to see the family Ned didn't really go into like the whole culture shock thing like I thought we might, but uh, still some interesting bits there. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm going to give this a rewatch, and I will be uh, right back with my thoughts on this. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, great episode probably said it before i'm saying it again this is one of the top ones of this season for me anyway um not the top one but definitely up there i, I just don't even know how to rank these but this is the fluttershy episode i've been waiting for for a very long time um just to i, I want to kind of walk through this one here um yeah very fast intro just boom here's the parents and, and the brother here's the family let's move on okay kind of had the same sudden intro as like a newbie dash so that's great. They don't waste a whole lot of time on that. Just dump us into the story and have more time for the the episode. So that's great. Fluttershy's parents. We clearly understand now where Fluttershy came from in terms of the way she used to be back in season one. Um, yeah, her parents are kind of doorknobs. <laughs> Sorry to use that term, but that how else do you describe them? Way too willing to you know let their let their son just run over them and mistreat them and whatever, and not be forceful with them. And, um, uh, really not too much to say about them. I mean, they're wonderful people. I, I, I love them, you know, they're, they're, they're nice, nice people, nice ponies, but just, you know, clearly they haven't learned the same, uh, assertiveness lessons that, uh, that Fluttershy has. So and it's ironic that Fluttershy is now mad at them for not being assertive when Fluttershy used to be as bad as they are. So <laughs> anyway, um, the brother Zephyr Breeze, what a narcissistic jerk. <laughs> At least he started out that way. Um, I said I had Sven Gallop flashbacks, but clearly he, he's nowhere near Sven Gallop. Though Sven Gallop had no redeeming qualities whatsoever back in the main attraction. Uh, here, you know, as the episode wore on, we started to realize or learn why Zephyr was doing what he was doing, and. I think I'm, I'm reading a little bit more into this than what was actually said in the episode. I feel like there's some subtext there. Um, I, I can kind of understand. I mean, well, first I just want to say, regardless of the reasons, they're reasons, not excuses. There is no excuse for him treating his parents like absolute dirt. I mean, crushing his mom's flowers, you know, you know, wrecking his dad's cloud collection. He didn't even try to move the jars out gently, just chuck them out the window and broken glass everywhere. I mean, come on. That, that was a little bit over the top, but... Um, but like I said, there are, there are reasons, not excuses, but reasons for, for why, why that's going on. Clearly he was having issues with you know, finding his path in life. He's tried, it looks like he's tried a lot of things and has probably failed at a lot of things. It's probably not just one thing, there's been a lot of things that he has tried and failed at in trying to find his niche in life, his, his special purpose, and 
Um, like I said, just because you got your cutie mark doesn't and know your talent doesn't mean you know how to apply it. We've seen that plenty of times before. So you know, with him, it appears it had gotten to a point where he had had so many failures that he just is, is too scared to even try anymore and for feel, fear of more failure. They just can't you know, bear to stand the pain of that anymore. Kind of you know gave me a little a vibe of the way starlight glimmer was you know starlight glimmer you know she lost her closest friend sunburst and apparently her only friend and it hurt her so badly that she just swore off friendship altogether she didn't want to risk going through all the trouble of making another another friend and having that friend leave and hurt her again so she just uh, you know swore it off altogether and you know took until she had the encounter with twilight to you know show her that friendship really was worth it after all um, so I, mean, I can kind of see some similarities like that. Yes, side note, I know Starlight was not in this episode. I was a little disappointed by that. Um, but at the same time, how would you have fit her in there? I, I feel like the thing at the, the, the incident at the castle with Spike is probably a lot easier for Zephyr to con Spike when he was alone than to have Starlight there, because I don't think Starlight would have fell on, fallen for that that easily. But, um... Oh, while I'm talking on that, just I, I, I got to switch over to that the the Tom Sawyer thing. I said I I, I kind of screwed up on that. It's not it wasn't a direct reference. There's a lot of differences in the story of uh, Tom Sawyer the, the the incident with the whitewashing of the fence in that book. Go read that book if you haven't read it. It's a great book, classic piece of literature. But um, there is a, a part in there where Tom Sawyer was tasked with a painting a fence, well whitewashing. It's kind of like a cheaper paint or something. Um, he's white, trying to whitewash a fence, hated working, didn't want to do it, you know, his, his friends started coming by and he played a little mind game with them and convinced them that, you know, it wasn't really work at all, it was great fun, and that they, you know, they were really missing out by not doing it, and he ended up convincing all of them to do the whitewashing for him, and he didn't have to do a little bit, you know, one bit of the work himself. Um, the, said some of the specifics of the story differ, but it's kind of the same general concept where uh, Zephyr played a little mind game with, with Spike, played to his ego, and got Spike to actually do all the window washing for him um, without you know him having to lift a, uh, lift a finger or a hoof. Sorry, not a finger. <laughs> because Spike was just, you know, going nuts over showing off his, you know, cleaning techniques and whatever and got duped. So, anyway, um, and then just while I'm on that, no, it's too bad we didn't see more of the thing. I thought they were going to go through all the main six with his jobs. I was really hoping to see him on the farm because Applejack probably would have knocked some sense into him. Also didn't get to see what happened at the at the Wonderbolts headquarters, um, which is unfortunate. I'm guessing they probably cut that for time constraints or something, but hey, Rainbow Dash followed through on her, uh, the, her threat of zapping him, so that was awesome. And it's just nice to see Rainbow Dash should being active with the Wonderbolts and stuff. Good continuity there. I'm still not sure where that's going, but nice to see they're still touching on it. So, back up the rabbit trail here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I said he's just, you know, refusing to even try. And I, said, I, I started kind of feeling sorry for him because uh, clearly he has... Um, oh, I lost my train of thought here. I'm sorry if I end up repeating some of this, uh, but... Ultimately, he, uh, yeah, he became too scared to even, even try stuff. And you know, some they, they fall into a. The, some people when they face that, they fall into a like a pit of depression and whatever. Him, he put on this whole facade of him being this you know super important uh, you know person that he's just like ah that's you know I, I'm better than that. They're they're you know that stuff the uh, main styling school and whatever. That's too political. Blah blah blah. He's always got some excuse for why he's he's over that, he's above that, and he's going to do his own thing and whatever. You know, deep down he knows full well that he's, you know, he, he's you know, you know, living in constant fear of, of failure and just, you know, he's putting on this, but he can't admit it to himself, much less his family, so he's putting on this big facade and, um, uh, you know, just basically running away from his problems and hiding. You know, and when it got to the point where Fluttershy kicked him out of her house, even, you know, I did kind of feel bad for him about that. But, you know, sometimes people just need to get to this point where they hit rock bottom on something before they they finally are able to admit to themselves that they have a problem and that they, they need help. And that's basically what happened with Zephyr, you know, and at the point where he got out in the woods and tried to set up his little camp and was failing miserably, even that. I mean, hey, at least he tried. 
but he failed and uh, you know, he got got to the point where he, he was forced to confront his fear of failure with uh, trying things and um, you know, finally became accepting of Fluttershy's help to try and get him back on track again. So, you know, that, that was the point that he needed to get to, he did, and, you know, then, you know, they, they gently but firmly, you know, pushed him to actually try the main styling thing the way it was supposed to be done, and he pulled it off. He found out he actually could do it. So, and then he, you know, eventually went back to the, uh, you know, the main styling school or whatever they call it and finished and graduated. Great, you know, um, good for him. He finally did something. So, you know, he's, he's sort of redeemed. I still would have liked to have heard him apologize to the parents. I'm kind of ticked that he didn't, uh, didn't ever apologize for any of that, but whatever, at least he's making something of himself now. So he's sort of redeemed. Um, so the switching over to Fluttershy, I said that this kind of was almost more about Zephyr, but I said for Fluttershy, this was such a great episode because we got to see, like we've been seeing with other characters this season, like with Rainbow Dash and Newbie Dash and with Spike and Gauntlet of Fire and whatever, we're seeing all the lessons that uh, Fluttershy has learned all kind of coming together and being utilized now. And, uh, you know, as... Like I did with Newbie Dash, I kind of went back and looked through some of these old episodes that Fluttershy has been, you know, focused in. And it's interesting to see some of the, the, the trends and highlights of this stuff. You know, and back in Dragonshy and Stairmaster, there, there was both... The, the two different scenarios there where she was forced to go confront, um, you know, uh, something dangerous that she wanted to stay as far away from as possible in order to save her friends. You know, first is the dragon, you know, threatening the main six. And then the CMCs ran off into the Everfree Forest, you know, and there was danger there with that cockatrice running around. She had to stare down that cockatrice and whatever, you know, she proved that she could be forceful when she needed to, when her friends were in danger. That's great and fine, but it was, you know, she needed to be able to, to apply some of that forcefulness in everyday situations too. Um, just a, a brief note in the, the Best Night Ever when they were at the gala. You know, she came bursting in the door of those animals. You're going to love me! You know, it's like, clearly, she can get really mean when she's... Or, she can get really scary when she's mean or angry. And, you know, but it's kind of like one extreme to the other. Either she's really timid or she's, you know, going nuts. And, you know, needed to find that balance. And it's interesting that that brings us into uh, putting your hoof down with Iron Will. You know, he convinced her that she needed to be more assertive and stand up for herself, which she did. But she ended up taking a little too far and got to the point where she was, you know, treating her friends rather poorly. Just, you know, with no respect and, and whatever is kind of, you know, being mean to them, calling them hurtful names and such. And, you know, of course, she was horrified when she when she realized what she was doing and almost, you know, reverted to an even worse state or something, I felt like. But... At the end, she kind of pulled it together, and uh, what with uh, with Iron Will when he came to collect payment, she put her hoof down and, and just gently but firmly said, "No, I'm not going to pay you because I'm not totally satisfied." And that was your guarantee, and she sent him on his way. And that was the first, I felt like, real big step with Fluttershy, where she's starting to find that balance. Um. So, you know, mo moving forward from there, um, Hurricane Fluttershy was actually a very interesting one. She was scared to death of, of you know, trying that uh, that hurricane water or that that water spout thing to move the water up to Cloudsdale. Didn't think she'd be any good at it. Um, well, of course, she had the you know stuff nagging at her from the past about not being a good flyer. She was convinced that she wasn't a good flyer, never would be, and therefore she would just be a burden. Wouldn't she would hurt them rather than help them? So she didn't want to even try. Isn't this sounding familiar with what happened with, with Zephyr? Is too afraid to try for risk of failure. Fortunately, she overcame that and ended up saving the day by helping, you know, that, that they couldn't have done it without her. Didn't have enough wing power. So that was great that she overcame that. Um, Keep Calm and Flutter On, that was a very interesting one. Um, when they were reforming, trying to reform Discord. Um, you know, there she, did, she didn't allow herself to, to go nuts with with all the the pranks and shenanigans that discord was pulling she kept her calm and and was you know continued her her gentle method of persuasion with him 
but it was actually not, not so much her interaction with Discord, but her interaction with interaction with her friends. All the rest of the main six had 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 it with Discord. They were fed up with them and wanted uh, Fluttershy to help them use the elements of harmony to to seal them back up again because they just were were not even going to try. So she actually had to stand firm against that peer pressure to you know to continue her convictions of wanting to you know give him an honest chance and convince him that friendship was really the way to go that he would be much worse off without friends and she ultimately succeeded so, uh, so that, that was an interesting twist of, of her having, having to stand firm and find that balance you know um philly vanilli another case where she was forced to confront a fear of hers you know singing out in front of everyone she enjoyed singing but just was too afraid to try it in public and ultimately started to overcome that by the end of the episode yeah it was just with her uh with her animals not uh, people that she was singing in front of but you know baby steps another fun reference to, to this episode zephyr talking about baby steps um and of course there is uh, it ain't easy being breezies where fluttershy was forced to kick the breezies out and force them to go home because ultimately it was uh, she knew that it was much better for them to do that than to stay with her you know, she, she didn't want to have to force them to do anything they didn't want to do, but she ultimately recognized that that was not in their best interest, and she had to stand firm and, uh, and you know, and get them out the door to so that they could go home and be where they, you know, it was best for them to be. I'm just talking in circles again, I'm sorry. Um, was it, you know, and there again, she, we're seeing that with, with her handling of, of Zephyr. She, you know, got him to the point where it's like, you can't stay here, you can't keep... You know, running away from your problems and and not face your fears, you have to get out and make something of yourself. You know, do what you need to do. So, so that, you know, just again looking back through all these episodes, you can see all these lessons that she is learning. But we, we just haven't seen a good point at which she's used all those those lessons. It's been all these little baby steps. This episode, we got to see where she took all those lessons, put them together. And this was no baby step. This was full on Fluttershy being, I, I, don't, I don't even know how, how you describe it, but clearly she's, she's found a, a, like a perfect balance between her, you know, her, her kindness and, you know, being firm to, in order to help the ones that she loves and cares about. And just all the, the facial expressions and everything, I mean, her, her, attitudes and emotions were just coming out so much more in this episode than than any before almost i mean i know i the, the, back in the hooffields and mccults that glare she had at the end was was priceless but here we were getting a whole lot of that um the, the animation in this episode was fantastic I, I even pointed out you know like the mains flowing when they were flying it was just i don't think we've seen that level of detail before it just animation continues to improve so uh sorry a little side note there um Oh yeah, um, the, the language incident. Apparently peeved is a curse word in Equestria. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually not sure. The thing with Dinky, I, that pony that Dinky was with, I have no idea who that is. I have looked through multiple lists of Gen 4 ponies on various websites. I cannot find that one. So unless I'm really missing an obscure reference somewhere, I think that might be a new pony. Which raises questions, because why, you know, we've already got the thing with Dinky being seen with both Amethyst Star and Derpy, so who's this third pony now? I don't know, but if anybody knows who's the, who, who that is, let me know, or if, you know, any theory, if it's a new pony, any theories on what that might be about, let me know. I mean, it could be just a, you know, babysitter for all I know. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, moving on from that, that was just a side note there. Um, yeah, I, I think I pretty much said, uh, what I, what I wanted to about, uh, Fluttershy. Um, just gotta touch on Rainbow Dash. What the heck? I, first of all, why is Rainbow Dash hanging around in Fluttershy's house so much? That that's like a new thing. Um, I'm sure the Flutter Dash people are eating that up. And then her and Zephyr, what? He's like hitting on her the entire episode, and she's just basically like, "Ew, no, gross, get away." I. <laughs> it was hilarious, but why? And well, furthermore, the way this was written. Apparently all the main six are very familiar with this family. It's not like they're meeting them for the first time like we are. Um, we've just, has never come up in the stories before. And so, you know, clearly they've got some history with this guy, but even Fluttershy's parents for some reason thought that Rainbow Dash and him were an item. And that just, like, 
Uh, no, no, no. We just, we don't need that. Just, I'm sure the shippers are just having a field day with this, but I'm, I'm just staying far, far away from that one. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, the one last thing I wanted to touch on here, this, this thought did occur to me. Um, you know, this is yet another case here in season six where we, we we're seeing kind of the overall, you know, character development cycle for uh, one of the main characters get finished off this time Fluttershy um, you know Rainbow Dash has you know become a member of the Wonderbolts Rarity has become successful with her boutiques Fluttershy has now you know found her perfect balance of of assert assertiveness and kindness you know it feels like these characters are being finished off and I know a lot of people are worried about like what's next where can we go from here how do how is there any story left the thought occurred to me as after I was rewatching this, I'm like, you know, we've got some really good writers this season. There, there's no doubt about that. With the quality of episodes that we've had overall this season, we've got some really good writers. And I think that actually by finishing up some of these storylines, you know, we've had a lot of expectations about what we are going to see this season because of all these hanging story threads. So the writers are kind of finishing those off for us one by one here. And I think in doing so, they're actually almost creating a, somewhat of a blank slate for themselves because, you know, now you've, you've got well-rounded, you know, well-developed characters that, you know, there's, there's no longer any expectations for us on what we expect to see out of them because we feel like their, their story is complete. That's the perfect time for a good writer to come in and say, hey, I've got a great idea for a whole new problem to throw at this character. Because, you know, just because we overcome a major, you know, or meet a major goal in our life, that doesn't mean their problems are over. We, you know, that now we start a new chapter of life, we've got a whole new set of problems. So, I think it's entirely possible to give all these main characters new problems, new goals to work towards. I don't think that's out of the question. So... It'll just be interesting to see where, where Hasbro takes this, but if I think if you know if we do get a season seven, which I'm pretty sure we will, um, I, I think th there's going to be a lot of opportunities for the writers to really surprise us with where they're going to take these characters, because I said that now is the perfect time to start throwing brand new things at that we'd never even thought about before. So I, I'm I'm curious to see where this goes. I, I think there's there there's some good opportunities ahead of, ahead of us here. So so I said don't don't lose you know don't don't be getting mad about you know like the story is done the series is over there's nothing left to write. I think there's plenty left to write and I think we might be surprised at some point. So anyway um, yeah I'm gonna wrap this up here. I think I've gone through everything that I had to say on this. Um, yeah, great episode. Um, significant improvement over last week for sure. Um, and I just I can't wait to see what uh, what we get for the last couple episodes here before we hit the uh, hit the hiatus. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to those. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll catch you again hopefully fairly soon for another reaction. Later. <laughs>